Hello everyone and welcome to Politics 101 Lecture 1.1. Today will be a kind of brief overview and introduction to the class, kind of going over the course mechanics, this course syllabus, things like that. Uh, we'll go over this and I'll answer any questions in more detail on our first discussion section on Wednesday. Uh, but I did want to give you all a bit of a virtual orientation, especially sent with um, virtual classes making things not always as clear and I want to make sure everyone is on the same page as we get started this semester. So um, I'm going to talk about uh, our course learning objectives and outcomes, talk about the course overview, assessment, logistics, all of the important things. Um, and this week we're also going to be talking building a learning community um, and we're going to start that by introducing ourselves. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit of self-introduction here. So I'm going to introduce myself, my teaching methods and approach for this class, talk about the course goals and mechanics, and then some logistics, communications, office hours, oxy resources. So who am I? Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Michael Christopher Sardo. I, this is my second year teaching here at Occidental College. I got my PhD in political science at Northwestern University. I also previously taught at the University of California, Irvine. I use the he, him, his series of pronouns, and you can address me as Professor Sardo or Dr. Sardo or Professor. Uh, my email is msardo at oxy.edu. Um, in normal times, my office was in Johnson Hall 312, um, but all of my office hours will be held virtually over Zoom, and I'll talk about that in just a second. Um, so I, primar I am trained as a political theorist primarily. I do research on questions of political responsibility, climate change, and democracy. I teach courses and political theory, the history of political thought, environmental politics, and American politics. Um, some of my recent research in, uh, focus on questions of who should be held responsible for climate change, um, how should we make sense of our individual responsibilities in the context of structural injustices, um, and what is the role of political theory in uh, what people are calling the Anthropocene, this new age of geologic time uh, in which human beings have become a force of nature. When I'm not uh, writing or teaching, I take identical selfies in front of different mountains because I like to go hiking with my family. Uh, this is in Wales and Wyoming and in um, Joshua Tree. Um, I also enjoy cooking food, um, lots of pizza apparently. Um, and when I'm not doing any of those things, I also uh, play tabletop miniatures games. Um, well, and I spend time with uh, my family, which includes uh, my cat, Riley, my dog, Holly, and most importantly, uh, my daughter. So uh, a little bit about my approach to teaching. My goals for you in this course are twofold. The first is to develop analytical tools. So I'm talking about concepts, theories, vocabularies, frameworks to better help, help you better understand the political world. But I also want you to develop a sense of skills, including critical thinking and reading, analysis and argumentation skills to help you be confident and competent democratic citizens. My approach is to kind of simultaneously have high standards for the quality of work that students do, but also provide the support uh, in kind of all facets for all students to reach those standards. Um, and obviously, none of us are working under ideal conditions. Most of us are working under far less than ideal conditions. I include myself in this. Um, so especially this semester, I'm, and that if you had me in the past semester, this is going to sound familiar uh, to you. Uh, there are three guiding principles, and these are all in the syllabus itself. Um, the first is transparency. I want to make sure that everything is clear and explicit with my expectations, instructions. I want to give you constant and constructive feedback. Uh, regular communication so that everyone is on the same page. I want to make sure this class is accessible, so that includes the formal uh, access accommodations through the disability services. I also want to make sure that we're engaging the material with multiple means um, and broader conceptions of accessibility. That's why this class has no required books for purchase. Um, finally, in terms, I want it to be flexible since I know that when things happen, uh, especially these days. So everyone gets one no questions asked 48 hour extension on a major assignment, um, additional accommodations as needed. If you are sick, if you have a family member who gets ill, if you have to social, if you have to quarantine or isolate for 14 days, right? That's gonna make it difficult for you to do your work on time and we'll make arrangements if and when those are needed. Um, obviously, you, I want to respect all of your privacy. You don't need to ever send me doctor's notes or anything like that. Um, just tell me that you need to use your extension or that something's going on and you need additional some additional time and we'll work from there. 
So why should you take this course other than it's a required course for both the politics and UEP majors? Um, well, we live in a time of multiple overlapping crises. Um, we have a legitimacy crisis of our democratic institutions uh, from the fact that a uh, combination of hyperpolarization, um, the spread of conspiracy theories and uh, fake news um, to the fact that a, the, um, a large mob of people tried to storm and occupy the Capitol to prevent the certification and authorization of a democratic election based on false beliefs about voter fraud. Um, we live in an era of hyperpolarization where political opponents view themselves, uh, view each other as enemies rather than as kind of the idea that you might hear in like the United Kingdom of a loyal opposition. Um, we are currently still grappling with a public health and economic crisis caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, millions of people are out of work. Millions of people have contracted the disease. Hundreds of thousands of people in this country have died. Um, and our ability to distribute vaccines has not been effective due to series of public policy failures. Um, and this is all political. And finally, thinking bigger, we're in the middle of a long-term climate crisis and politics matters for how we address the climate crisis. So why, given how terrible everything sounds, why should we spend time in Politics 101? Well, studying political science can help us understand how institutions are designed, how they function, how they constrain and enable action. It can also help us understand um, the why people believe politically the way they do. What are their motivations? What are their expectations? Why do people act the way they do? So our goals for the course are threefold. First, to identify and describe the core features of American political institutions and processes. Uh, second, to describe and explain political outcomes using core concepts in political science, such as rationality, collective action, institutions, and power. And finally, to evaluate the reality of American politics as compared to its own normative principles. Is America as democratic or as Republican as it claims to be? So how are we going to reach those goals? Um, the course is divided into three kind of main units. The first uh, is the unit I call foundations, looking about the foundational concepts of political science, things like rationality, collective action, institutions, power, history, um, but also the foundational concepts of the United States, of uh, the constitution, of the kind of principles of the form of government that we have. Then we're looking at collective action and institutions, both at the question of political behavior, right? What explains individual and group political behavior? And then also looking at how political institutions, whether formal institutions like Congress, the Supreme Court, or inform more informal and less political, explicitly political institutions like the media, how they mediate collective action. Finally, turning to questions of justice and citizenship, what are the rights and burdens of citizenship? And answering that last question of how the US, does the US measure up to its founding ideals? Um, so the format is a little bit different than it would usually be. So to give you, this, this is all in more detail in the syllabus, but to give you a quick rundown, on Monday, there'll be no synchronous class. Instead, there'll be two to three mini lectures, each one between 15 to 20 minutes or so, uh, introducing kind of key course themes, um, you're, and you're also responsible for the weekly course readings. The course readings are for the whole week, not for a particular day. And during the time when I'd normally, we normally have class scheduled, I will be holding office hours. I've done this to make sure that everyone should be available to come to my office hours since you signed up for a class at that time. On Wednesday, we'll have synchronous discussion section and the syllabus lists the specific uh, topics that we'll be talking about. So you can kind of get a sense. We'll also be doing various kind of simulations, debates, and activities during these uh, discussion sections. And Friday, we'll also have a discussion section, but these will be a little bit different format. Most of them will be current events Fridays, where students will, you will prepare current events reports trying to use the content from this class to explain what's going on in the world around us. Uh, everyone's responsible for doing one of those. I'll talk about that in a second. Um, when we are coming up to exams, we'll do exam review periods. And then occasionally, depending on how the schedule works out, we will have more of a topical discussion. So the course materials, um, the, the textbook is an open source textbook, American Government, the second edition. Um, it is available for free. You can download it as a PDF or access it online. There are links on the Moodle page and every other reading is available on Moodle, either as a PDF or linked to a library resource that you can access the material from. So you do not need to purchase any books. So what are we doing in terms of assignments and assessments? Um, well, 
Coming to class regularly, uh, these discussion sections and participating is 5% of the class. Um, basically, the way I will evaluate that is um, your baseline attendance form rate, like how many sections you attend will form your attendance, the baseline grade, and then outstanding participation can raise it to letter grade. So if you attend 80% of the classes, you start with an 80, but you're really in active and engaged in those 80%, you can get up to a 90, right? Um, at the end of the mini lectures for the, the last mini lecture for the week, uh, there will be a minute paper question um, at kind of you, gauging your understanding of the week's readings and lecture material. Um, that will be you fill them out via a Google form, and these will be graded on a completion basis to form 5% of your grade. Everyone will serve as a virtual discussion leader one, uh, one time during the semester in which you will pose um, a question for the class, uh, fo focusing on a particular topic, theme, part of the reading discussion we had in class, kind of explaining and, and, and analyzing that the, this, the issue that you're interested in and posing at least two kind of open-ended provocative questions for discussion. Um, everyone else, um, you'll have, you're responsible for doing 10 throughout the semester, will reply to one of these posts with a short, uh, I think a 200 word reply, and those 10 replies will be 10% of your grade. Everyone is responsible for one current event report, and I'll talk about these in the discussion section in more detail. But these, um, you will be required to kind of summarize something that's going on in the world uh, with reference to reputable news articles and show how some concepts, theories, ideas from the class can help us understand what's happening. There'll be three open book and open note uh, Ex short exams throughout the course of the semester based on four short answer questions and you'll have a week to write those exams. And finally, the final exam uh, you'll have will be two kind of cumulative essay questions. So you might be thinking that that is a lot of things. Um, so why is there so much, so many small assignments? Well, the idea is that more assignments means that there's lower stakes for each one, instead of it being kind of like two exams and a final, and that's all of your grade, and each of those things is 25 to 30% of your final grade, you have trouble, you don't do your best on one assignment, and that really hurts your grades. It also provides for kind of multiple opportunities for feedback and improvement, right, that you can build on you're, you can kind of show steady improvement throughout the semester and get more feedback from me, which is more valuable than the grade. And finally, it provides more of a structure since we're all kind of living in our weird COVID bubbles, isolated from each other physically, um, that kind of the regular interaction and kind of being required to do a little bit of writing each week can provide more structure for the class. Um, so again, this is just breaking down that grade. Um, I've included, the, this is the grading scale that's also in the syllabus. Um, kind of grading from like an A means that you're substantially exceeding all of the exception expectations for that work uh, for the assignment. B, the A minus to the B, kind of that you are meeting all of the expectations and exceeding some of the expectations. So it's good work, but not the best work. Um, the B minus to the C range is that you're meeting most of the expectations, uh, but there's significant area for improvement. Uh, the D and F range, you're really not meeting the expectations for the assignment. So I firmly believe that your ability to do good work requires an environment where we're all empowered to learn and contribute. And that means that while we might have reason to passion and contentious debate, um, belittling each other, instead of each other, mocking each other, that will not be tolerated. And it's the best way that you can think about doing this is grounding your disagreement in the assigned material rather than kind of your own, the other person. So, oh, I disagree with how you're interpreting what this author says, or, well, I have a counterexample from this article that we read, things like that. Um, you are entitled to an accessible classroom. If you haven't already, make sure you are registered with disability services to make sure, so that I get your disability letter, so I can make sure that I make this class as accessible as you are entitled to. This is a right that you have. This isn't an inconvenience. This is, um, you have an I have an obligation to make sure that the class is accessible for you. Um, please note down all the dates and times of the assignments uh, on the, from the syllabus. Uh, but and if you have a conflict, let me know if as soon as possible so we can make alternative arrangements. Uh, conflicts because of religious observances or reasons of conscience don't count towards the free extension that everyone gets. And obviously life happens. If there's something that's preventing you from completing assignment or doing your best work, reach out to me and we can schedule a makeup or an alternative or make something work so that you can still get credit for this class. Um, 
So communication and office hours. Uh, my office hours are on Mondays uh, from 1.30 to 3 p.m. via Zoom. You can sign up for a guaranteed spot at profstarter.youcanbook.me. I'll show you what this link looks like in just a second. Um, you should come to office hours if you have questions, are excited, or want to learn more about the material, you're unsure about um, the assignment's expectation or grade, you're under stress because of a personal matter, you're, you were unable to attend the class meeting and you have questions about the material, or you want to talk to me about school or life or anything else. And if you can't make my scheduled office hours, please email me to schedule a time. Um, I've included a link to this little video um, that is not appearing, uh, so I'll just show you the link later. Um, about like why you should attend office hours. It's funny. Um, email is a great medium for clarifying assignments or scheduling meetings. It's not a great medium for like when you have a substantive question about the material. That's what office hours are for. Um, and when you write an email, please, please, please try to follow as close as much to this kind of like format. Um, dear Professor Sardo, not hey you, um, kind of remind me who you are and what class you're in. Um, here, show that, tell me what the question that you have is. Show that you've tried to figure out what the um, answer is, right? Like, oh, I've looked at the syllabus and there seem to be two different deadlines for when this exam is due, which sometimes happens because I, I am human and I make mistakes too. Um, but this would show me that you aren't, you've actually like, you know, you've done your homework and that you're not just looking for me to solve this problem um, that you've taken no effort to solve. Um, and then explain like what you would like from me, right? Uh, signing off with a thanks or have a great day or best, some sort of kind of acknowledgement and also your name. Um, a couple of things about Occidental policies. Um, you are responsible for following the policies on academic ethics. Um, if you are breaking the, the academic integrity policy, if you are hiring other people to write your exams for you, if you are um, plagiarizing, if you are any, any kind of other violations of academic integrity, um, you will be subject to disciplinary action. And it, it's out of my hands. Like I'm not in charge at that point. It goes to the, discipline, the academic uh, review board. Um, it's handled at the dean level. I just provide a report. So Please make, if you have any questions about academic integrity or what is allowed and what's not allowed, please check with me first before you do it. Um, additionally, I'm also a mandatory reporter for the purposes of Title IX. If you do share experiences of sexual misconduct with me, I'm required by law to notify the Title IX office. There are confidential resources on campus that include the survivor advocate, Marion Frapwell, the Emmons Counseling Center, um, and the Reverend Dr. Susan Young, um, who are not required to uh, make those reports. So I just want uh, you to know that before this, uh, just hopefully that will, this will never happen. Um, but if you do share those experiences with me, I do have to make file that report. So um, finally, um, all forms of discrimination are not tolerated by me or by the college and appropriate disciplinary actions will be taken for those who violate those policies. Now, more importantly for me, uh, I want you to be successful in this class uh, in, at Oxy and in life and your physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual health are probably more important than your academic success. I encourage you to let me know if you're facing any challenges precluding you from doing your best work and we can work together to address them. Um, the Emmons Wellness uh, Center has many mental health resources including individual and group counseling. The 24-7 emergency hotline still works. I encourage you to keep this phone number 323-341-4141 in your phone at all times. Um, and especially in these times, asking for help is a sign of strength, not a sign of weakness. On the syllabus, uh, there's also a link to resources on campus to support you in a number of areas from immigration status to support for queer and trans students. Um, and if you have questions about resources available at Oxy, come talk to me. I will do my best to direct you uh, to the resources that can give you the support that you need. Um, the Writing Center, uh, while there's not a ton of writing, like paper writing in this class, the Writing Center um, is still act working, uh, is still kind of functioning in a virtual format. So I encourage you to visit the Writing Center. So next lecture, we're gonna be introducing uh, political science more formally. Um, but before that, I wanna do a quick kind of overview to show you a couple of things on the Moodle page. So if you haven't already logged into the Moodle page, this is what it look like, looks like. Um, I've arranged it into modules that include important information. Um, this is where you will find the syllabus once I finally finalize it and upload it. Um, the, where you can find the link to the textbook, um, a first aid information form uh, that I will that you should get an email from me about, 
um, that is a just a required form um, to, for me to gauge your kind of knowledge about the class, um, as well as other information that is voluntary to, so that I can make sure the class is inclusive and accessible. The link to our Zoom room for when our, we'll have our Wednesday and Friday discussion sections. Um, the sign up a Google form where you can sign up for current, being discussion leader or current events Fridays, uh, where the weekly discussion board where you will post your discussion uh, discussion topics. If you are the virtual discussion leader, um, as well as the office hours appointment sign up form, uh, which looks like this. It is oh, I didn't open the link. Uh, it is a you can book me page. You uh, you sign up for a time slot. So you want to meet with me at 1.30 and you fill in this information and then that reserves that spot for me. Um, the link to that office hours room is right here, uh, as well as the tips for emailing your professors. I've also included all uh, the link to the YouTube playlist where all of the mini lectures will be recorded um, and, or, or, and uploaded. As you can see, we already have um, lectures through for the first three weeks up and more will be up by the first week of classes. Um, and then this module is where you'll submit your current events reports, your exams, um, and you'll also find kind of assignment information, grading criteria for things like attendance and participation, uh, as well as the minute papers here. Um, and I encourage you, I'll go over, I'll answer any questions about this in, and go over these in discussion section, but just wanted to give you an overview. Then you'll find here kind of the modules for each week. So you have the lecture and the readings for week one, the lectures and the readings for week two. And I've also included some supplementary materials that I reference in the lectures. Uh, same thing for week three, the lectures, the readings, supplementary materials. So that's how that will work. Um, and kind of all the way through the different kind of modules, um, you'll see that there are sometimes notes like for the Brady, Burba, and Schlossman article, you do not need to read past page 285. Um, and I don't have, no, include in these modules the required readings from the textbook. Instead, you will find those in the actual syllabus. So let me pull that up real quick to finish up. Um, right, it is the syllabus. So the syllabus. So what happens when you have too many documents open? There it is. Okay, here is our syllabus. Um, this is currently not yet fully finalized. It will be finalized in the next day or two. Um, so it has all of the information that I've just gone over, um, including details about pedagogical philosophy, um, some kind of the written explanation of the course format, and a brief summary of the different assignments. Uh, and then down here, we have the kind of course schedule. So week one, right, you're watching lecture 1.1. You're also responsible for watching lecture 1.2 and these two assigned readings. Then for week two, you have chapter one from the textbook, which will be noted as AG, and then a chapter from a book on Moodle page. So uh, you'll see that there, if there's AG readings, they're not linked to um, the Moodle page. They're just in the textbook so that you can gain access to that. So that's it for this kind of introductory lecture, virtual orientation, however you want to call it. Um, if you have any questions before the semester starts, go ahead and email me. Uh, I'll answer any and all of your questions during that first discussion section. Uh, I'll go over these things again, um, and I'll go over the kind of baseline expectations and assignments. Uh, but if you have any questions, send me an email. I'm happy to kind of clarify things that aren't clear. Uh, and I look forward to working with you and learning with you this semester. Um, stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you soon. Take care, everyone.